So, hi everyone. I'm Vidya. I'm a computer vision engineer from India. I usually work with images, cameras, lenses, and all those things. And the good thing with Blender, we can simulate all those things in Blender. So I use Blender as a simulating tool to uh, verify, understand different kind of camera-based pro projects. So one of the projects I have done in recent years is simula uh, simulating a generator for vision correction display. Uh, I'm not sure how many people have heard about vision correction displays. Anyway, I will brief into what is vision correction displays first, then go on to how I modeled it in Blender. So, uh, all of you must have been aware about visual impairments, what are the things, like, let me go through that also. So there are diff uh, the, it can be categorized into two different categories, lower orders and higher orders. Lower order comes with the nearsightedness, farsightedness, like myopia, hyperopia, astigmatism, and higher order comes with spherical abrasions and irregular shaped lenses. All these are being rectified using different, different uh, correct correction mechanism. Uh, what are the correction, correcting mechanisms? So must be familiar with eyeglasses. Most of you guys are wearing also. And then there are contact lenses. That's if you wear it after a long time, it will be irritation for us. Then next one is refractive surgery. It's a little bit expensive. And then the last alternative is vision correction display. Compared with the rest of things, uh, all other is rectifying your uh, glasses power like your lens power using glasses or uh, uh, contact lenses, it is trying to correct your lenses power. But in vision correction display, the correction is done on the display itself. You don't have to wear any kind of uh, eye wears. So what is exactly vision correction display? Display which aims to uh, change the image content and which will display a content according to the user's perception. Like uh, if we, on the assumption that we know the user's vision problem, what is his vision problem and what, is, what are the parameters they having, with that we will change the image content and display it over. So the basic aim is the a person with some vision problem would able to see the entire image without wearing any kind of glassware. So what are the different types of displays which can be used as vision correction display? That are multi-layer displays, holographic displays, light field displays. In this project, we use light field display as a vision correction display. And then I come to what is light field display. So light field is a representation of light rays. So with the light rays, all the 3D models can be represented so with, you, with the use of light field def, uh, representation, we will be able to model all 3D objects in the world. So basic aim of the light field display is also reconstruct the entire light field on the surface of the display. So again, what are the types of light field displays? There are two different types of light field display also. Like LCD display with micro lens array an LCD display with a pinhole array. So what is LCD display with a pinhole array? It's basically we are placing a pinhole array on top of a LCD display and it reconstructs the complete light field on the surface and which in turn a human eye can see the clear image. So and then how the micro lens array comes? In the same way, we are replacing the pinhole array with the micro lens array. So placing a uh, micro lens array on the top of the display and it will act as a vision, uh, light field display. So this is how a micro lens array looks like. I am here showing a hexagonal shaped micro lens array. In this project, we actually use square shaped ones. So the basic pipeline of vision correction display. We will take some image, some whatever image we want to be displayed. We will take the image, do some pre-filtering and interlacing. So the pre-filtering and interlacing algorithms are we are taken from the SIGGRAPH paper, uh, glass-free displays. And the 
pre-filtered image, what we get after the software, we will display on the vision correction display. So these are the basic entire setup of vision correction display. Take an image, do some pre-filtering, then do some the interlacing work, we will get a pre-filtered image, which is displayed on the LCD display. So up to this part, this is a software. The next part is hardware, like display. Then on top of display, we are placing a lens light array or a pinhole array. And this is viewed by a person with vision problem. And that person should clearly uh, see the uh, clear image in the retina. So that is the total task. So experimental setup to rectify, like verify our software is working good or not is like this way. So we will uh, take a camera. The camera will act as a human eye. We can uh, manually set the focus and adjust the parameters and everything to look, make it as a uh, problem uh, defocused eye and place uh, the uh, vision correction display uh, in a distance from that. So this is how the entire system setup look like. So how the vision correction display prototype looks like. We will have a screen, any kind of screen, and on top of that, we will either place a pinhole array or a lens light array. So as you can see, this is how a pinhole array looks like, and how afterwards placing it, it will be like this way. So these are the entire vision correction uh, displays hardware part. So this, these are the physical model of that. So how I simulated all those things in Blender, it's the part. So difficulties with the display. Like there is a difficulty with the physical model. That's also the reason we are going to the uh, simulation. Major one, expensive. Very much expensive. Even light uh, lens light array is expensive, pinhole array is expensive. And once we made them, they have the fixed parameters. We cannot adjust any kind of parameters. We are stuck with the parameters. Then the next one is modeling defocus type. People have different, different types of vision problems. So we have to model entire problems. Each time we have to adjust the cameras and all those things, uh, adjust the focal length. So many parameters we have to adjust. For that also, we need a good camera. That's also expensive. <laughs> but so if we have a simulator, what are the usefulness? Cost of is texting. Like, as I told, everything is expensive. A blender is not. <laughs> it's free. So it's very cost effective. Then faster iteration. Even if we have a physical model, each time if we want to change some parameters, we have to go back to the production again, get it done again. So that iteration is very much lengthier. If we have some kind of simulator, it's very easy for the, like the iteration length is very much less. Then is human perception. So we have to model whole different varieties of vision, correction, vision problems, like all the, uh, like hyperopia, myopia, stigmatism, all kind of different problems. Then virtual user testing. And we have to test it out, whether the person is correctly seeing the image or our software is working fine, all those things. And accurately get the real world perception. So Blender as a software. Virtual user, you can model a virtual user very easily. Like all kind of different impairments, we can model it. And the, all the parameters, even if we want set, we can change it again. And then all the visuals seen by the visual users, also we can get it out while rendering. Then vision correction display, it's also possible. LCD displays can be modeled. The real world with the all functionality of pinhole array and lens light array, both of them can be uh, modeled in Blender. Then easily to change the, all the parameters also. And mostly accurately we are able to get the performance. Now I'm going to walk through how I made the each and every, every uh, components in Blender. So for human eye, we used a camera. For a cam uh, with the help of depth of field parameter, we can manually set the camera to a fixed focus. And aperture parameters, we can set the pupil length, how much pupil size, all those parameters of human eyes can be adjusted. Basically, with the camera, we can 
uh, uh, changing the parameters, we will able to get uh, complete the focus tie system. Next is LCD modeling. Basically, we use the image as a plane. With that, it will work as LCD. And in that also, we can adjust the pixel per inch. There is an option for adjusting that also. So we set it as a 240, 254 pixel per inch. And we generate the LCD display as a self-emitting display. So we don't have to worry about much more about lighting. It will have the um, uh, its own emission. So emission strength also can be adjusted. That's a very important point in ours. Like why in the pinhole, like we need more emission strength compared to lens light array. So emission strength is also can be adjusted. So what is pinhole array? So I have been talking about pinhole and lens lid, and you must be thinking, what is exactly pinhole array? Actually, pinhole array is a uh, grid of tiny holes, tiny holes which are separated equally distance. As you can see, I'm not sure you cannot clearly see, there are small, small holes which are separated at equal distances. This is solid view of that. Then, like, it's also easily modelable. You, you say cubic mesh to get it 0.5 mm thickness with that Boolean, uh, Boolean modifier, we are able to get tiny, tiny holes with array modifier. It's completely, we can adjust the array length of the tiny holes. And with the so much testing and experimentation, we come to the optima, optimal size of the pinhole as 100 micrometer. And this is separated by 500 micrometer. So this is the material view. So you can see how much tiny holes are there, this much tiny holes there, separated by equally distance. This is pinhole array. Next one is lens slit array. So what is lens slit array? We, it's also a pack of small lenses, micro lenses, which are closely packed together, like closely packed of pack of micro lenses. So we use OptiCore uh, add-on for that. In that square lens is easily modeled. Uh, we can ad adjust the curvature of the um, lens thickness, uh, lens width, all the parameters, focal length, everything can be adjusted. All these parameters need to be adjusted in our iteration each and every time. So it's very much easy for us. So this is how it looks like finally. You can see how closely packed micro lens. It's, it's very closely packed. We use 500 micrometers of length of lenses. So it's that much small, small lenses. Production is way much costly. So this is the entire system setup. So we have three components, camera, uh, pinhole or lens light array, then the display image. In the material view, you can see this is how it looks like. So we are giving uh, the image which is pre-filtered earlier by the software to be viewed by the camera. So the camera is defocused one. We will be manually setting the uh, focus to somewhere. Some All the parameters will be adjusted according to the our need. And like we know that what are the parameters we are set around the camera. With that parameters, we are pre-filtering the image. That image is viewed there, uh, displayed there. With that, cam how camera is seeing. So next part is the testing part. So by simply rendering the camera, we are able to get the visuals, which is seen by a defocused eye. So one experiment, I will show its results of one experiment. So camera is placed 25 centimeters away from the display and it is focused on 38 centimeters. It's approximately simulate plus 1.5 diopter hyperopic eye. So this is how the results. So as you can see, the first image is the original image. The second one is the image which is seen with the normal displays by the defocused eye. And third one is the pre-filtered image which we are, uh, get out of our software. And the fourth one is the image captured by the defocused eye uh, with the pinhole. As you can see, that is much more better in terms of uh, compare with the second image, how clear it gets. And the fourth one is with the lens letter array. 
like these last two images are rendered with the blender all, all the images as you can see the how much clarity we are getting like each iteration we are able to generate these images so while if we go back on back propagation so we will able to foster our iteration of uh, modifying our software so these uh, these are the parameters like pitch of the pinhole we are used to is 500 micrometer and separated by uh, 500 like p uh, pitch size is 100 micrometers and separated by 500 micrometers and lens red pitch is 500 micrometers the lens small lens slice is 500 micrometer and the pixel per inch is 254 then some more results of that itself yes the same order you can see the last two images are the images captured within the blender with the system so that's me which better than the second one so we are in the process of making the test images also better so test images are still in the processing stage so i will show the video <coughs> i think it's not open Yeah, okay. As you can see, I'm setting up the things. I think it's running slow. Yeah, how the camera is seen, it's running very slow. So, after I give the uh, fixed focus, as you can see, how much it comes like the bl uh, image is getting blurred. So this is the pre-filtered image with the pre-filtered image. We have to add the pinhole array. This is how pinhole array looks like. Like if you zoom in. Like these are tiny, tiny holes which are equally separated. So in the camera view, this is how you see it started rendering. I didn't render completely, it started rendering. Like as it gets clearer, the features are getting more clearer. And for pinhole, the amount of light is passing through is very small so we have to adjust the emission strength that's why ldl told the emission strength parameter is very much important for us so for the light, uh, lens light array we don't need, we don't know need that much emission strength so this is the lens light array with the lens light array as you can see this is the material view and the that's the camera view how much it's getting clearer And the ch challenges face. So there are few challenges with Blender also. Like after we are using for pinhole array size, size is 100 micrometer. Beyond, like if you are trying to reduce that, ray tracing actually doesn't work very good with Blender. So we have a limitation on that. Then the other one is there is an upper limit. So as we increase the uh, size, uh, uh, larger the size of the revision correction display, the blender has some sort of problems. So FutureWorks is much more uh, improving our software. So the pre-filtering and everything will be better and um, deal with other kind of problems. Right now we only deal with hyperopic eye and myopic eye. There is astigmatism and all those being problems. We have to develop the algorithms for, like we have an algorithm, we have to develop much more about that. So that's it. Thank you.